Rightio, Joey. Let's talk about some of the great goal kickers of all time. And uh, some clubs go into a season without a noted kicker. It's half that of a try as far as value is concerned. Who's some of those who have just really caught your attention over the years? Okay. So let's break it down. If you've got someone kicking for your life. Yeah, who's that? Who would you want kicking for your life? Well, number one for me, I would have Daryl Halligan. Yep. I think uh, the way he kicked, especially in big moments. And I, I don't know if you've done some kicking with Daryl. Yeah. He done some kicking with me in late my career at Newcastle. The way he broke it down, not only with your mechanics of kicking, but psychologically, things, to, little pointers to think about. Uh, a really good coach in that manner, but for me, he was probably the best kicker we've seen in rugby league and came from that rugby union background. Mm. Was it 98 they played Parramatta and that he had to nail two from the two. Seat. How good was that? Well, he hit one, he didn't hit it that sweet and it reversed. It actually, for a right foot kicker, he'd normally bend it from right to left slightly. It actually went from left to right. So I think the gods, the football gods, like Daryl as a kicker too, they don't even play <laughs> that day, but for me, the best kicker, and closely behind him, I'd put Hazamel Masri. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah. What um, was the record? 35 in a row? Something yeah, like that? I think it was, yeah. yeah. Amazing kicker. Can you remember that kick he kicked on a windy day at Cronulla? Yeah. Where he bent it back. Uh, that was amazing. Great control of the ball. Hasn't played a lot of soccer growing up, so he had great touch on the ball. And people think of Hazamel Masri, they just think great goal kicker, but he was also a really good winger. Mm. Knew his trade, defensively knew where to put himself. But for me, he would be, you know, photo finish developed print with, uh, with Daryl Halligan, but uh, I don't have him, probably second. Well, Joe, with those two, they've both got the long levers. Even El Masri, who's quite small, he's actually got the long legs as Halligan does. But I've had this chat with James Maloney, and I believe that he has, well, he doesn't have the gene, which is the doubt gene. He believes he's going to kick every goal, win every game. If it was on the line, he's got to be a guy you consider. Well, I watch his technique. One thing about uh, James Maloney, when you talk about golf and people say, keep your head down, mm. you watch James Maloney when he kicks, he actually doesn't look at the ball where he kicks it. He kicks and he lands on the foot he kicks with. So he kicks right footed, but lands right footed and has got his head totally over the ball and over the kick. Uh, this technique is phenomenal. I understand it's taught by Daryl Halligan. And for me, to actually land on the foot you kick with is an amazing technique, but it gets you through the ball. And if you watch when James Maloney, after he kicks, his head stays down pretty much till the ball goes through the post. So, uh, look, Halligan, Hazem, James Maloney, they're all up there, but James Maloney for me is just a little bit behind Hazem and Halligan. Yeah, you make a good point. If you watch Maloney, he'll finish four or five metres beyond the ball, won't he? But directly past the sheet, past in the, line with where he's kicked. Just keeps running through. So these guys have mastered the synthetic ball, so to speak. Let's go back a little bit earlier. Perhaps choose one who's had a crack at the leather ball. I think Matthew Ridge, when he came from New Zealand Rugby Union in the early 90s, yep. probably 1991. Now, he was the first player I've seen in rugby league to actually lean the ball a little bit forward, mm. which um, takes a little length off your kick, but so so much more accurate and uh, he was kicking goals from the sideline for fun he just wasn't missing back in those days in the late 80s early 90s if someone kicked the ball from the sideline people would stand and especially the old lady the mm. grandmothers the grandmothers would stand and applaud because you wouldn't see it that much but when Rich came over he was nailing from the sideline every time then everyone's technique changed they copied his style and uh, you know we're getting kickers today kicking up around 90%. I think he was one of the first to kick all season around 80%, which at the time was unbelievable because the best before Ridge was up around 60%. I used to kick uh, practicing something that he did, I was told, Matthew Ridge, for you young kickers out there, he would put the ball on the goal line. On the goal line, And yeah. aim at the one post. Yeah, I used to do that too, because I heard that Matthew Ridge used to, used to do that. And uh, he used to do it hours on hours on hours. But, yeah, he was a big influence on, on myself as a goal kicker. Uh, and he changed the style and changed the way people goal kick. Um, yeah, great kicker. Well, there's four of the best, according to Andrew Johns, and there's some knocking on the door. Nathan Cleary, Nathan he'll be Cleary. back soon. He's, he's a brilliant kicker as he's well. He's like that two-year-old colt. He's coming through, <laughs> yeah. booting everyone, you know, he's just going to develop into an absolute superstar. Oh, there you go. The best kickers of all time, according to Andrew Johns.